So in case you guys couldn't notice, I'm obviously very excited about this build. It's a $200 gaming and streaming computer that most of you guys can actually build for yourselves. Two weekends ago, I went to DreamHack, which is a gaming and streaming convention here in Atlanta. It was phenomenal, absolutely loved it, but it made me realize that a lot of people don't have the opportunity to A, play video games, and B, share the video games that they play with their friends or anybody else. And so that was the inspiration for the computer you see behind me, the Ozbox version 2.1. And especially if you're a college or high school student, I'm currently in college myself, so I understand that it's hard to invest into something like video games when tuition and other things are in the way. This project wouldn't have been possible without Chris and his team from Upcycle Computer Works. We wanted to make a computer that's capable of gaming and streaming for as cheap as possible, but is also as powerful as possible. And this is what we came up with. So today I wanna to walk you through the entire buying and building process and show you guys the results at the end. So let's get right into it after this message from our sponsor. I finally have time to play Fortnite before my next class. Yo, who's this Ozbox homework freak that just joined the map? <laughs> yeah, dude, this guy totally sucks. Hey Ozbox, hey, hey Ozbox homework. Dude, can you do my algebra for me? <laughs> Probably not, because he's stupid. He's an idiot, man. Just look at how he built in Fortnite. <laughs> Hello to you guys, too. I appreciate the warm welcome. What did you say to me, you little rat? I'll have you know that my dad graduated from Clown State Union has over 300 hours of therapy for epic games. He Don't settle for 12-year-olds harassing you online. World of Tanks is here to save the day. World of Tanks is an epic online PvP tank battle game featuring authentic tanks from the mid 20th century and taking place in historic locations. One of the best parts, it's completely free. If you want to merc people while having no repercussions and do it while making friends, World of Tanks is the game for you. I just made an account and started playing and moments like this have already happened. Okay, so I have to fall back. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I get it, I get it guys, I get it guys, I get it, I get it. I get it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got it. There are too many. I was trying to fall back. I lost in a tutorial. Click the invite link in the description and use the code TANKTASTIC to get a T127 tank, 500 gold, and 7 days of premium access. This is only for brand new players, but even if you're returning, still hop in the game. You'll have a great time. And if you're new, it's basically a giveaway. So check out World of Tanks today and use code TANKTASTIC for some free goodies if you're new. Alright, that's it for today's sponsor. Let's continue building this computer. As a general rule of thumb, if you're building a computer for 250 or less, you want to buy a pre-built machine and then upgrade it. It's the easiest and the most cost-effective way. So that's basically what we're doing. On the Upcycle Computer Works website, they have Dell Optiplexes for $70 to $150, but you save another 10 with the code OZTOX. I know all the model names and lingo can be daunting, but you want either an i5 or i7 for streaming, and you want a mini tower, aka MT model. The MT model is critical in order for our subsequent upgrades to actually fit into this build. All of the computers come with eight gigs of RAM and a 750 gigabyte hard drive. Upcycle Computer Works sent over the Optiplex 990 with an i5 2400, but we'll upgrade it to an i7 so you guys can see the performance difference between the two and then choose accordingly. You'll also want to order a 400 plus watt power supply from them. The model that I got is a 600B from EVGA, but you're basically guaranteed a decent power supply unit that won't burn down your house. Just whatever you do, do not buy these power supplies from eBay. That is straight up clownery, don't do it. And lastly, you're gonna order a video card from eBay, either an RX 470 or an RX 570 from AMD. I chose the 570 just because of its amazing value. Nvidia's hardware encoding is miles better for streaming than AMD's, but the 570 remains the best choice for our budget. I snagged mine for 50 bucks, but they go for 50 to $80. Also, make sure the length of your video card doesn't exceed 10 and a half inches, but preferably more than 10, just to make the building process a lot simpler. If it's over 10 and a half inches, it won't fit in the case. So best case scenario, after you order all these parts, you're gonna spend about 165 bucks on the i5 model, depending on the price of the video card, or 205 bucks on the i7 model. Combining everything is pretty straightforward too. Firstly, you wanna make sure that the computer is fully functional, so plug in the power cable, connect your monitor, and power it on. If it boots up to Windows 10, then you're like 50% of the way, so congratulations. 
You might need to power cycle it once or twice for you to actually reach the operating system. Next, click the BIOS download link that corresponds to your Optiplex model in the description and run it to update your BIOS. Your PC will restart once or twice. That's completely normal. Turn off the computer, unplug everything, and then open up the case by lifting up the flap on the side. You see all of those cables connected to the power supply at the top? Yeah, we're gonna unplug every single one of them. There are four different things to unplug when you're removing the power supply. You have the SATA cable that powers the hard drive on the bottom right inside of the cage. You have the DVD power pin on the top left. You have the CPU four pin on the top left of the motherboard. You have the 24 pin that powers the motherboard on the far right. Unscrew the power supply and push the flap on the inside of the case to actually pull it out. Get your new power supply and install it. If you struggle installing the new power supply, don't worry, I did too. That was hard. We're going to plug all of the cables back in now. So the fat 24 pin on the motherboard on the far right, the skinnier CPU four pin on the top left, and the storage power pins to the hard drive in the cage on the bottom right. Push down these cables to make them flat against the case. This will help make and install the video card much, much smoother. On the outside of the case is a case flap near the bottom. Push this in. This makes room for the video card ports. After that, remove all of the metal slots. So you see that skinny blue slot right here on the motherboard? That's the PCIe slot and that is where the video card will be installed. Make sure the video card's fans are facing towards you and then tilt the card downward so the fans are facing down towards the ground. Place the video card in the PCIe slot. You should hear a click. Insert the metal slots you removed and attach the video IO slot latch once again. Finally, take the six or eight pin power supply cable labeled PCIe and plug those directly into the video card. So technically you're done, but I recommend doing some cable management to make the case and the build look pretty and to increase airflow through the rest of the computer. But besides that, yeah, you built yourself a $200 gaming and streaming computer. So time to check out some gameplay. Warning, kind of bad. So when you roast me in the comments, please go easy, thank you. So there's a noticeable difference between the i5 and the i7 in gaming and streaming. So definitely get the i7 if you can afford it. All of these games are at 1080p. In Smite with maximum settings, the i7 had 20 to 30 more FPS in the middle of a battle. Granted, if you're playing Smite, you're probably not using the maximum settings, so the i5 will be perfectly fine if you tweak a few things. Fortnite is a similar story. The i7 shows 20 to 30 more frames per second using low settings and an epic view distance. Both stayed above 100 FPS most of the time, so that point is moot, but noteworthy once we head over to streaming. Overwatch displays the biggest difference. The i7 has double the performance with the medium preset and is noticeably smoother than the i5. Lowering the settings to low helps the i5 some, but the extra threads on the i7 make a big difference. Both are still very much playable, but you have way more breathing room on the i7 computer. Lastly, in World of Tanks, using maximum settings, the two systems were basically identical. You won't notice a difference between the two, and I think the video card would be the deciding factor here. We are only getting around 70 FPS, but turning down the settings would fix this. So streaming is possible on both of these computers, but for obvious reasons, the i7 is gonna be a little bit better, give you better breathing room too. But before we get into that, let me show you the settings I used in OBS and I think these are good if you have a cheaper, slower computer too. In OBS Studio, go to Settings and then go to Output and set it to Advanced Mode. Change the encoder to the AMD Hardware option and rescale the output to 1280 by 720. Your bitrate should be lowered if you have poor internet connection, but for the time being, stay with the default and up it or lower it depending on how it goes. Go to the Video tab and change the output scaled resolution to 1280 by 720. The base resolution is your monitor's resolution, so keep that. Afterwards, change the downscale filter to bilinear. If you find that the stream is stable, you can super sample for higher quality streams. After that, choose between 30 FPS and 60 FPS. For Fortnite, 60 FPS was fine for both computers, but for Overwatch, 30 worked best for the i5 computer, and 60 was fine for the i7 computer. 
Hi guys, I'm just going to insert myself here really quickly. You might see very inconsistent streaming performance, and that's because my upload speed is super inconsistent. So thank you Spectrum for that. But basically, I'm getting anywhere from 500 kilobits per second up to like 3000 kilobits per second, but it alternates every few seconds. So the choppiness is not because of the computer or its lack of power. It's because my upload speed is really, really bad. I tried changing the bitrate. That didn't really fix the problem, so this is the best I could do. As you can see, both the i7 and the i5 were able to stream Fortnite at 720p60 and with over 100 FPS in the game. Settings were on low with a medium view distance. Overwatch was more difficult to run, but the i5 could do 720p30 streaming with low settings and a 75 FPS cap, while the i7 maintained 720p60 streaming with medium settings and no FPS cap. Like I mentioned earlier, the i7 has way more breathing room, so go for that if you can. So as you guys can see, it is 100% possible to actually game and stream on this computer right here but it doesn't come without its downfalls. So let's talk about those. The first one, pretty obvious, it's on a dead socket. So even though the i7 is good for streaming, it's the best processor you're gonna be able to get with this computer. Honestly, I think this computer is a good stopgap option. So you buy it for 200 bucks and then you save up for another year until you can upgrade to something better in the future. Secondly, it uses mechanical drives. I don't know if you guys can hear that right now, but the hard drive is spinning and it's not quiet. Can you guys hear that? I highly, highly, highly recommend getting an SSD, even if it's just 120 gigs, because you could use that as your boot drive and then store all of your games and files on your hard drive. I'll link a few down in the description below. And lastly, it's not the prettiest computer out there. It does have that standard office look, but if you do like that sleeper kind PC vibe, then this might be a good computer for you. It's a sacrifice you have to make in order to get the best performance. Big shout out to Upcycle Computer Works for helping make this possible. It definitely wouldn't have been without their help. And if you guys want peripherals or anything like that, they do have a new section called parts and accessories, I believe. So you can pick up a mouse and keyboard for super cheap. I think like five bucks shipped. Maybe it's $10, I don't know. That's it for this video, guys. If you loved it, then subscribe. If you liked it, share, all of that kind of stuff. And again, I want to thank World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys use code TANKTASTIC to get a bunch of free goodies like 7 Days Premium and a free tank if you are completely new to the game. Link in the description for that. Happy Thanksgiving, and if you're not in America, happy Friday. Oh, cool. Yeah, happy Friday. Like, it's the weekend. So no matter what, it's a good day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I wish I could fly. Thank you.